The trigonometric identities are a really confusing point for some students in a trigonometry class. They seem to come out of thin air. They're really hard to remember. What I want to show you in the next series of videos is how we can derive the trigonometric identities all with this simple and, well, it's, it's quite beautiful and amazing formula that e to the i times an angle, theta, equals the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. This is also called Euler's equation, and a very well-known specific case of this is e to the i theta is pi. In this case, cosine of pi is negative 1, and the sine is 0, so this doesn't matter. And if e to the i pi is negative 1. So, the double angle identity. This identity involves asking if we have, it's a nice color here, so the cosine of 2 times an angle, what is this? And what is the sine of 2 times an angle? Well, let's try using e to the i theta, because it turns out that the combination of exponentiation and complex numbers captures trigonometry in an elegant and simple way. So let's do this e to the i, well, we're trying to find 2 theta, so what if we just plug in 2 theta? Well, what we'll get is the cosine of 2 theta plus the i sine of 2 theta. This is interesting, but it's not really useful yet. And we could say, okay, cosine 2 theta, the real part of e to the i 2 pi, that's not too useful. What we can do, though, something very interesting, because this is part of an exponentiation problem, this 2 can be put to another exponent. We could say e to the i 2 theta is the same as e to the i theta squared. And e to the i theta squared is just, well, I don't even have to write it down again. I can just copy it from up here. It's just this squared. And knowing this, knowing that this value here equals this value here, we can set them equal to each other and we can solve. So what we can do is say, OK, well, what's this value if we expand it out? Well, the cosine squared of theta, cosine squared of theta, plus i squared is negative 1, so minus sine squared of theta, minus sine squared of theta. And then we're going to add 2 times i times the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And now we have, have two distinct parts to this equation. We have the real part, which we can underline here in yellow, the real part. And we have the imaginary part, which I underline here in red. And if I go ahead and copy this right here, this is what this equals right here. So this equals this. And as we see, we again have, if I go over underlining here a bit, we have a real part and we have an imaginary part. And they both have no relation to each other, so the real parts of each equation must be equal and the imaginary parts must be equal. And amazingly, such a simple method shows us that the cosine of 2 theta over here, this real part of the equation, equals the real part of this equation, the cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. So let's write that down. The cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. OK. And now the imaginary part of this equation, the sine of 2 theta times i, must equal the imaginary part of this equation, 2 cosine of theta sine of theta times i. So we have 2 cosine of theta sine of theta. And amazingly, a simple method from Euler's equation, e to the i theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. The application of this incredible connection of trigonometry to complex numbers and to exponentiation has brought us to the double angle identity. In the next video, we're going to do the same thing, but for the angle sum identities.